okay, okay, okay. But what about night? Why is that a separate element of sky? Isn't night, isn't, isn't, and why is it a separate element from, from darkness? Isn't, isn't night defined by change in the sky? More, like, namely by darkness? Why, why make it have its own distinction? It makes sense for darkness to be distinguished. One can go into the nearest cave and realize it doesn't take the sky for darkness to exist on both the literal and moral planes of perception. A 2013 study from the Journal of Environmental Psychology found that experiencing darkness leads individuals to have less of a care for moral considerations. They're more likely to, to lie, to cheat, to steal, to, um, well, all of those things, and, and possibly to get to more, the more heinous acts like murder and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> but we won't really have to go into that until... Well, Kronos, Kronos, that wily, wily individual who really hates his father, will really get into <laughs> a bit of that. But um, another study, this one from 1995, found that in a medical center in Anchorage, Alaska, in over a five-year period, over half of all nurse medication errors were made in the first three months of the year. Now, I understand this could be very well like, a, like just um, ill-speaking of medical centers in Anchorage, Alaska, uh, if that's the case, then sorry for those of you listening that <laughs> that live in Anchorage, Alaska. But other than that, it could it could very well be something that's a bit more uh, a bit less superficial. It could be de demonstrable uh, of a of a more wider uh, a more wider uh, analysis that that human errors tend to go to tend to go up as darkness increases. It, like human errors increases, darkness increases. The darkest amounts of the of the year produce the largest amount of of human error. So, which is which is which is rather interesting because it's like as darkness darkness increases, so does human error, which makes sense if we're dealing with like seeing things. But other than that, um, because we assume these places are well lit in order to see where where you're where you're sticking the needles in everybody to begin with, it would be horrendous if they weren't. If you were operating by candlelight, which uh, could be the case in some. <laughs> Some less developed, uh, less developed parts of the world. But anyways, um, it's it's uh, demonstrable of a broader trend that as darkness increases, so does human error, um, and founding like a confounding er variables being considered. And furthermore, according to a 2004 study from the Journal of Neuro Ophthalmology, long periods of not seeing light when blindfolded, um, it's quite possible that one will experience visual hallucinations ranging from simple, like bright spots of light, to complex, like faces, landscapes, ornate objects. Um, however, like all of this sort of poses the question and of, uh, is this solely attributable to, attributable to um, darkness? Or are these effects originating from the night? Like this seems like a rather trying conundrum on the surface, but it's interesting and clarifying when examined from a perspective that considers evolutionary phenomenon. A 2015 study in the International Journal of Psychophysiology asked the question of whether night or darkness intensifies a feeling of fear. They sought to answer it by having 120 women put into a windowless cubicle and perform the task of looking at neutral pictures like nature scenes. So like, a, like if, if you've ever seen like a nature a nature documentary with, with Morgan Freeman, um, not specifically Morgan Freeman, but just for this specific ex example of, uh, of getting, getting to your memory. Um, if you've ever seen like a nature doc documentary with like Morgan Freeman um, doing a voiceover of, uh, of it. So like nature scenes like that. Um, so they, they had them look at that and they had them look at scary pictures like those depicting violence. Um, and they had them listen to neutral sounds, like nature sounds, birds chirping, crickets, uh, crickets chirping, uh, like, like th those sorts of noises. And they had them listen to scary sounds, like screams of terror. Um, and a fourth of them did this during the day with the lights on. A fourth of them did this, did this same task during the day in complete darkness. A fourth of them did this at nighttime with the lights on. And a fourth of them did this at night in complete darkness. Now what they discovered um, came, off, came off as a rather, rather uh, surprising because they found that regardless of the lighting, the night groups found these stimuli, the pictures and sounds more fearful. This was confirmed at the, as, at, at the physiological level when it was noticed that, that their heart rates and levels of perspiration 
were actually higher than the other two groups. These results show that one is more likely to give in to fear responses when it's night because it's night rather than because of the darkness which permeates it. This means that it's quite likely that the, uh, that the results Tendencies, tendencies to care less about moral considerations, making more mistakes, hallucinating from, from, from the other experience, experiments mentioned, er, mentioned earlier, likely have night at their core rather than just darkness. Why is this happening? Well, it comes back to a process which my sleep-deprived audience is likely to know. The circadian rhythm. It's basically the natural process which our bodies go through to regulate the sleep-wake cycle. There's a lot more that goes into it involving melatonin and cortisol, but the basic grounds of what it is, uh, of what it is constitute a fine, a fine level of comprehension for the, for, the, um, for the purpose of this discussion. The point is that the brain is preparing for night when, when night comes, and night used to be a very terrifying thing, and, and like, like for, for sleeping out there in the environment. Picture, picture camping, wearing nothing but a, but a, but a, but a picture camping, except not having a tent and wearing nothing but a loincloth out there with the bare wilderness. It's like a, you're, you're golem, but with no motivation whatsoever, and you're, you're scrawny and weak and pathetic in comparison to everything else that exists out there. And, uh, <laughs> and go, right? <laughs> it's just like, um, and so it's sort of, it's sort of, it's, it's a bit dramatic. <laughs> Um, but but it illustrates it, it illustrates my point, and, and the brain is prepped for it. Like the parts uh, the parts of the brain which regulate emotion are far older than the parts which allow one to reason. And one can hardly think of a stronger emotion than fear. Like the the in the case of like a so like the amygdala, uh, the amygdala which uh, which sort of uh, roughly stated governs fear responses and whatnot. Like that that sort of side of of, of behavior is far older than the prefrontal cortex, which roughly stated um, uh, manages reason, re reasoning capacity. Um, so this mechanism, it, it may not be the best when when working with like complex, with uh, with more complex social relations and uh, morality, but. The alertness, the alertness which it gives is certainly very useful for, for basic survival. Um, but it leaves us uh, with the fact that we're more likely to act rashly, being more under the sway of fear at night than in most instances. So you're more likely to act rashly, more likely to make mistakes, uh, lapses of judgment, that sort of thing. But what does Hesiod really have to say about all of this? He basically agrees. Uh, he says that night gave birth to hateful destiny. Black, black fate, death, sleep, the tribe of dreams, hair full of woes, Hesperides, which sort of like uh, goes against my argument, unless if there's some further analysis which is needed to be, which needs to be done on that. Nymphs of the golden apples beyond, th those are the nymphs of the apples beyond uh, Oceanus, um, uh, who you all may be familiar with. And then he goes on to say destinies, the fates, nemesis, which sometimes people say is just revenge, but it's more like divine retribution. It's more like, oh wow, like we, we all saw that coming sort of thing. It's like a, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, like, like that sort of thing. Like if you, <clears throat> and, and then there's like a, I won't <laughs> sort of get further into that, but, but then there's like fraud, wanton love, old age, and heiress, who represents human discord. To make the point more explicit, he says that the night brings a lot. Of, so basically, Hesiod says that the night brings a lot of human badness. That, that's basically the point right there. Hesiod makes Eris the embodiment of discord. Okay, so discord in, in this sense is a lot different from chaos um, because because uh, it's it's representative of all of the like. like the, the heart of evil is basically human, is basically the, the point that, which is kind of made there. Um, but, but it's more so like um, all of, the, all of the, the bad things that, that people have to deal with that come from people. It's like uh, that's basically what Eris sort of represents. And she, um, and she gives birth on her own to trouble, oblivion, famine. Uh, wait, 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 goodness. Uh, trouble, oblivion, famine, tearful woes, contests and slaughters. Fights, homicides, quarreling, falsehoods, words, disputes, lawless, lawlessness, ruinous mischief, and last but certainly not least, the oath, which Hesiod says 
is it hurts most men on earth, especially those that perjure, those that go back on their word. Now, this may not demonstrate that he knew particularly about the fear factor that goes into it, but he wasn't stupid, right? He recognized the effects that Knight had on his fellow man. And for that, I, I, I'd have to say that he's a, he's a bit more in depth than a lot of people give him credit for.